Good morning, everyone. We're going to turn to God's Word and to 1 Samuel. And we'll be reading verses 1 to 28. So just as a little bit of background, at the beginning of Samuel, Israel was suffering from eternal corruption, particularly the sons of Eli, the priesthood. And the external threats were still there from the Philistines. Now we're going to read a remarkable portion of God's Word, so I want you to really lean in and listen to what God is going to say to us through His Word this morning. We're going to eavesdrop on a certain lady called Hannah. There was a certain man from Ramathim, a Zephite, from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jehoam, the son of Eli, the son of Tohar, the son of Zuth, an Ephraimite. He had two wives, one was called Hannah and the other about Panana. Panana had children, but Hannah had none. And year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophnan and Phileas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. And whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife Penona and to all his, her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion because he loved her and the Lord had closed her womb. And because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. And this went on year after year. Imagine that. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. And her husband Elkanah would say to Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? And once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. And now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. And in her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. No razor will ever be used on his hand. And as she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. And Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, how long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. (laughs) Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. And Eli answered, Go in peace. And may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, May your servant find favour in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something. And her face was no longer downcast. And early the next morning they arose and worshipped before the Lord and then went back to their home at Ramah. And Elkanah made love to his wife Hannah and the Lord remembered her. And so in the course of time Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel saying, because I asked the Lord for him. And when her husband Elkanah went up with all the family to offer this annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfil his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, after the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord and he will live there always. Wow. Do what seems best to her, to you, her husband Elkanah told her. Stay here until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord make good his word. And so the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her young young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ether of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. And when the bull had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli, and she said to him, Pardon me, my Lord. As surely as you lived, I am the woman who stood here beside you 
prayer to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord, and for his whole life he shall be given over to the Lord, and he worship the Lord there. Wow, what a story. I'm sure God is going to bless that reading to us from his precious word this morning. Isn't it marvellous when God has his hand on a situation and God is weaving a pattern, weaving a, a story, and it's beginning to come alive. And sometimes we have no idea what God is doing. So before we dive into his word, let's just pray for a moment. <laughs> So Father, I just pray as we lean into your word this morning, as we seek to learn, as we seek to be teachable in your presence, that you will just minister to us through your word, through your Holy Spirit. Bring to our minds, speak to us clearly those things that you want to speak to us about and to take away with us. Father, help us to lean in now, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Should see uh, yes. There they are. That's my crew. <laughs> That's the family. Do you know I love family? And I thought just introducing a little bit about my background is I love my children. And it's important to me that they know Jesus Christ. This is a picture, it's a few years old. We're not a perfect family, we've all had our struggles, we all have our ups and downs. Some of them you might recognise, you might know the and Ben. But you know, there's precious times where we can spend time together and family is important. And you know, I want you to know, family is under attack in the season and the world that we live in. But I want you to understand afresh that family is important to God and it's important to me. I had a great mum and dad who uh, loved the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, I was one of four boys and um, all my brothers have become Christians and they love the Lord and they're serving the Lord in one form or another. But you know, one of my earliest childhood memories is this. I can remember we were four boys where we were always doing something, trying to keep out of mischief, maybe. But I can remember one particular day and I couldn't find my mum. And I, don't, I can't remember how old I was, but I couldn't find mum. So I went round the house and I looked around the house in different rooms. And then I went to the bedroom, their bedroom, and I saw my mum on her knees beside her bed. She was praying. Wow. I didn't say anything, I just looked. And I thought, wow, my mum is praying. And you know, that picture has stayed with me the whole of my life. That my mum loved me enough to pray for me. And you know, that's been the challenge of my life. Because when we have family, when we have sons, when we have uh, boys and girls, and when we then have more boys and girls, and then we have grandchildren, do I love them enough to pray for them? Do you pray for your children? Do you pray for your wife? Ursula says hi, by the way. Unfortunately, she's got things that uh, she responsibilities this morning, but she sends you her love. Do you care? For each other? Do you care for your wife, your husband, your children, your grandparents, your neighbours enough to pray for them? Do you care about their lives? Do you love them in a way that you can't explain? It's amazing, isn't it, the bond when these young children come into our lives and suddenly you love them and you hold on to them. I can remember holding the grandchildren. Do you know it's easy with grandchildren? Can I tell you that? It's much easier with grandchildren. You can cause havoc and give them back. I love it. I love it. You can do so much more than you want to do with your own children when they were young. Because there's consequences. But with grandchildren, you give them back. It's okay. 
Leanne knows that. So does Joy. So do my children. But you see, it's tremendous, isn't it? Family, relationships are important. And we eavesdrop this morning on a relationship, and we're going to be unpacking that in a few moments. But I want to talk, and I want to ask you honest questions this morning. So all of our, uh, my children will say they've had ups and downs. But family is important. Now I stopped my career about six months before COVID hit. So it's been a strange time of refire. My children all said to me, I'm not allowed to retire, I have to refire. So I have to go. Now I refired for six months and then God said, let's stop. <laughs> so I'm not sure what that means. But what an amazing last three years we've had. What an incredible period of time we've had. And I believe as God has been challenging me, he wants to meet with us all this morning and speak into our hearts and our lives to stir us up, move us forward. The question is, is your heart receptive to him this morning? Can I urge you to tune into his word, to tune into God's word? Because uniquely, uniquely God is going to speak to us all this morning. And I love that. I love that when we're all together, God speaks to us through his Holy Spirit. And you speak to one and another and I think, why did you remember that point? I remember this. But God speaks to us all. And I love that. So I pray this morning that you're never, ever going to be the same again. And I pray that God will pour out his blessing upon you. And I want us to be expectant. If you came here this morning with no well, expectation this morning, you've got a fantastic tree. Did you know you were going to have a fantastic tree? Was it here last week? Pretty good, isn't it? Everybody got their trees up at home? How's that? Excellence. Excellence. Follow their leads. Okay. Get the decks up. My grandchildren are coming around today, later on today. So we had to get the tree up on Friday. Otherwise, we would be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so, this morning, God knows your name. God knows your name. How is your relationship with God this morning? How is your prayer life? What is your expectation in living the Christian life and of God? Are you talking regularly? Are you in relationship? Do you understand the heart of God? What voices do you listen to and give headspace to? My grandson keeps playing a song over and over again and he likes to turn it up when I'm taking it home in the car and it talks about voices in your head. And all I can remember is after he's gone, his voices in my head. And it goes on and on, but he likes it. But you see, we're living in a day where there's so many voices. What do you think? It's all about me today. What do you think? You can have an opinion about anything. Print it on social media. Voice it on social media. It's 100% all about whose voices you're allowing in. TV, adverts, websites, YouTube, 101 ways to get into your head. The attacks and voices come at us from all angles and all views. So forgive me for being very direct this morning, but God loves you and wants to be in relationship with you. It's the most exciting journey any of us can have. To journey with our Creator who is all-powerful and deserves the best, and wants the best for us, will walk with us no matter how hard our personal journey is. I want us this morning to take a glimpse of some of those hard prayers in the Bible. Look at Hannah's prayer and apply them to ourselves. See what we can learn. See what we can take away. I want us to infuse our prayer life, push you into investing in your relationship with our Creator, encourage you if you are a Christian to move forward. Don't stay still. Don't ever stay still. Push you into investing in your relationship. To trust and have faith in God. If you're lukewarm, if you've lost your first love, then I would urge you to fall back in love with the Saviour of the world. 
to treasure his presence and daily help, to rejoice in new mercies daily, to change your moans into thanksgiving, to change your mindset to one of hope for the future, not gloom. Choose to follow him more closely. Be in relationship. We live in a world, don't we, where Satan is trying to take us away from relationships, drive us apart. We live at a time when so many people are saying they're lonely. So, so many people feel isolated and alone. If you left home this morning without committing the day to him, bringing God into your day, I want to tell you, is so important. I want to challenge you to never, ever do that again. Always commit your steps to God before you leave your home. So, let's dive in. Let's join Hannah and let's open God's word. Have the chapter open. If you've got your Bibles, have the chapter open. So, in a moment of crisis, in a moment of crisis, this dear lady comes before the Lord. She's at the end of her tether. She's at the end of herself. Every year they go up to the temple and she hasn't got any children and Paniah, the other wife, has children. And you see, right at the outset of this story, we realise that this alone wasn't God's best. You see, Elkanah had two wives and God said it would be better to have one. But he'd got two wives. And I want you to see that in the relationships going on here, there's lots of needles. There's lots of irritation because Banana, who is fruitful and is having children, is taunting and goading Hannah. And she's irritating her. And she's constantly needling her. And Hannah's life is miserable. And she's in crisis this morning as we read these verses. And I want to ask you this morning, maybe, have you ever got to that stage where you feel your life is in crisis? You feel that you've come to the end of yourself and you just don't know which way to turn. There's not much joy at home. There's not much joy at sight. And there's not much joy with your husband. And then more than that, when you're in the the privacy of your own home, there's the other wife and she's constantly putting it over you that she's got children and you're barren. Oh dear. And it's a bit of a miserable time and a miserable existence. So she goes to the temple and she dares to pray. Have you known that when when you can't do anything else, when you're at the beyond yourself, then you pour out your heart. That's what the Word of God said. Hannah poured out her heart to God in prayer. Have you ever done that? Wow. Wow. You see, God wants us to be in relationship. Do you know, I heard something really sad. A friend of mine was going through some difficult days, and I said to him, have you prayed about it? And he says, I didn't think God would be interested in my working life. And I said, wow. Well, no, he is. Let him in. Let him in. Pray to him. God is interested in your today. He's interested in your working life. He's interested in the things that make you sad and unhappy. He's interested in where you are today, right now. How you came in here. Struggling with illness, maybe. Struggling with the thoughts that are going on in your mind. The unsettlement in the world. There's hardly any peace around, is there? So what's God saying for you? Have you got to the point where you're so desperate that you're just pouring out your heart to God in prayer? Do you know sometimes, and one of the saddest things as Christians sometimes is this that we almost think that prayer is doing nothing. Have you heard people say, well, I've got to this point in my life and I thought, well, nothing else has worked, so I'll pray. But prayer, let me tell you, prayer is doing something. You're taking your prayer, your hard wish to God. 
And He is almighty. And He's all-knowing. And He loves you. He loves you. Do you know know what a a wonderful thing? You know, when your grandchildren, when your grandchildren and your children, isn't it great when they come and ask you for something? Do you like that? You know, they specifically come and and they they blow you up and they they say, Grand sweet, we know that you're so good at doing that. Will you do this for me? You feel feel 10 feet tall because they came to you, they asked you something that you could do, and you just wanted to do it. You wanted to bless them. Can you imagine the creator of the world is looking down at your life and he's seeing the pain that you're in. He's seeing the struggles that you're going in and he says, when are you going to tell me? When are you going to talk to me? When are you going to share what's going on? Why are you leaving me out of your day to day? Why are you leaving me outside of your life? Please come to me in prayer. And Hannah pours out her heart to the Lord. How big is your God? How big? Do you expect God to answer prayer? Do you really? Are you praying for your children? Are you praying for your husband, your nearest and dearest? Who are you praying for? Who's on your heart right now? You want God to do something in that person's life. But you stop trusting God. You don't really believe that God can do anything. Do you know when we become Christians, when we decide, decide to follow God, it doesn't mean to say that everything's going to be a bunch of roses, does it? <laughs> but I can honestly say when I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ that I have no regrets. Life hasn't always been easy. And there are ups and downs of life, but God is always faithful. And the difference is, is that God is always by my side. He's always there indwelling his children through his Holy Spirit, leading and guiding and helping us through when the journey is just plain tough. He loves you this morning. He loves Hannah. And Hannah said she just wanted a son. She wanted a son and then she made a deal with God. She made a deal. Have you ever done that? God, if you bless me in this way, if you do this, if you answer my prayer, I'll do this for you. Have you done that? That's what Hannah said. Hannah said, if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you, God. He'll be precious. He'll be, he'll be, he'll be amazing. But I'll give him back to you. Ever bargain with God? You ever done that? Maybe your life has got to that point and you just said, God, if you answer my prayer, if you lead me in this way, then I'll, I'll, I'll do anything for you. Six months later, you forget. Sometimes we can make promises too long. But I want you to know this morning that in the midst of Hannah's praying, pouring out her soul to the Lord's, that God meets her. And God answers and hears her prayer. <laughs> wow. You see, God is working his purposes out because Samuel is going to be born and Samuel is going to be a priest and he's going to be a judge, the last judge of Israel. And he's going to be a prophet and he's going to be an incredible man. And he's going to be Hannah's son, Hannah's boy. And God is going to do incredible things. Incredible things. But you know, I love it in all of that messiness of whole life. And when Elkanah says to her, aren't I better to you than ten sons? It just proves that men don't always get it. And sometimes... We don't understand. And Alcana didn't understand the pain that his wife was in. In the messiness of life, sometimes the people that are around us don't get it. They don't understand. And yet God loves Hannah. 
and wants to bless her, wants to use her for his purposes. And he's been saving and he's been waiting for this moment when Hannah would pour out her heart to God and God was going to answer in an incredible way and bless her. And so Samuel is born and it's going to change everything. What a day. What a day. Can you imagine Hannah's whole demeanour changes? She feels blessed, she feels hurt. She's walking around with a smile on her face because she's got a son. Everything's different. And you know, in the New Testament, when we see the Lord Jesus Christ, and we see the way that he moved amongst people, and we see that when he was in his ministry those three years, the way that he touched people's lives, and they were never the same again. He healed a person here and he healed someone over here. He forgave their sin and he moved amongst them. They saw miracles. They saw incredible things. He walked on the water. And people's lives were touched and moved and changed. And they were never going to be the same again. And when and God still does that today. He wants to bless you. He wants to touch your life. He wants to move you forward with expectation that the world seeks to knock us down. It seeks to knock us down. It knocks this book down. Jesus Christ is used as a swear word and, a, and there is so much blasphemy in the world today. And We need to hold him up. He is the saviour of the world. He is the hope of the world. And this Christmas time, we need to make sure that the message goes out. The world has lost hope. We've been in a pandemic. We're in a war situation and a war footing. We're still going through difficult times. We're in a, going into recession times. There is so much doom and gloom. And if our if our face and our sight and our whole heart is focused on the issues and the problems there, it robs us of all that God wants to pour into our lives. We are not a people that don't have a hope. We are not a people that don't have a saviour. And we do. Hannah is fed up, troubles, not happy with the direction of her life is going in and wants a son and a lot of strengths. That was the standout point of Hannah's life. But the action point was this, that Hannah prays and she takes it to God. And I want to challenge you this morning, if you haven't taken whatever it is that's weighing heavily on you this morning, then take it to God. When you get home, you kneel down, you pray, and you talk to your Heavenly Father, and you pour out your heart to Him. Bring God into your problem. Bring God into your life, your day, your life. He wants you to share your life. Listen to Hannah's second prayer. So the first time she pours out her heart to the, to the Lord and she asks for a son. God answers her prayer and after the son is weaned, probably between two and three years of age, she then takes him to Eli and hands him over to God for the priesthood. <laughs> How could she do that, I ask myself. How could she do that? But she trusted God. She made a, a bargain with God and she was going to keep it. But I want you to know that God Bless Hannah after that with other sons and daughters. God loved her. Listen to some of this. Chapter 2, then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. Do not keep Talking so proud, you'll let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. Wow, she's really getting going. And the bows of the warriors are broken, but those who stumble are armed with strength. Those who are full hire themselves out for food, but those who are hungry are hungry no more. She who is barren has borne seven children. 
But she who has had many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. She's pouring out her heart. Her heart is overwhelmed with thankfulness to God. It's just bubbling up and running over because she recognises what God has done in her life. Now we haven't got too much time, but I want us to just quickly flip over to Jonah. (coughs) Very different situation going on with Jonah. But you see, Jonah was a prophet and he was given a mission. You know, it's good to sometimes get a mission, isn't it? Do you like that? You know, you're getting a mission like Mission Impossible. You get given an envelope in the morning and uh, this, is, this is your task for the day. But that's what uh, Jonah, Jonah was a prophet and God gave him missions. Now then, a little bit of a problem. I'm going to do this quite quickly. So the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh, preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. That's the mission. Jonah's response, he ran away. He didn't like the mission. So he didn't accept the mission, he ran away from the mission. Okay? So please take notes. Jonah ran away, tried to run away from God. Now I've always think it's an interesting because he's a prophet, so you would think he has an understanding of God, how almighty he is, how all-knowing he is, and how all-seeing he is. But for some reason, in a moment of madness, Jonah thinks he can run away. I don't really get that, but he did. Moment of madness. Okay, so, few steps forward. Chapter 2, okay, Jonah's prayer. Okay, situation has changed a little bit. He's been on a ship. Storm came. Jonah, without uh, too much ado, was thrown overboard because, uh, in his own words, uh, he knew that the storm had come upon the boat because he was running away from God. So he said, the only way to put this right is to chuck me overboard. Again, I don't know what Jonah was thinking here, but um, this, is, this, is, uh, this is a moment of clarity, maybe for a prophet. I don't know. Anyway, from inside the fish then, so, so Jonah gets chucked out uh, into the water, fish comes and swallows him, all right, Jonah is sitting in the belly of a fish. Great spot, great spot. Okay, so here we go. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God and said, In my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. Hey God, you know, things haven't gone exactly like I thought they would. You know, you gave me a mission. I didn't particularly want it. I ran away. Now I'm in a fish. Can we talk? <laughs> you know, this is, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? But how, how messed up does life have to be before we get back into a relationship and actually talk? Why didn't Jonah have a conversation with God right at the beginning and say, look, I don't much like this mission. Can we discuss it? Maybe, this, maybe we can tweak it in a few places and then I'll go. But he doesn't do that because he runs. So, now Jonah's coming to his senses and he suddenly realised, ah, so, God is great. God is all powerful. God can do anything. So maybe God knows I'm in this belly of the fish and maybe God can do something about it and maybe... I'll change my mind and I'll do what God wants me to do anyway. Or I'll see what he wants me to do. Maybe God doesn't want to trust me with that mission now because I've let him down. And sometimes we can think like, have you ever missed an opportunity? Do you know what it is to be as Christians? You know, when, you, when you're out there sometimes and the Holy Spirit just gives you a little brick prod, go and say hello. Go and tell that person God loves them. Go and show kindness over there. And sometimes you miss it and you just hold back a minute and the moment goes. But have you, do you know what the joy is when you do it? Sometimes, you know, we feel silly, don't we, but in, in doing it. But you don't need to worry. It doesn't matter. If you're silly, then you're being silly for God. It's okay because God is weaving. God is doing something. 
And you never know when somebody needs to hear just that word of encouragement, just a little bit of kindness that's going to change that person's whole life and perception. God can do incredible things. So, okay, back to the fish. In my distress, I called to the Lord. He answered me from deep in the realm of the dead. I called for help and you listened to my cry. God's listening. And God heard Jonah's voice. Then, little way forward, chapter 3, take 2. Then the word of the Lord out of the fish, by the way, he's out of the fish, smells a little bit, probably had a shower, now he's ready, ready for mission to come again. Okay, so, then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah, you ready? Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Good. I love that. You see, God sometimes, he keeps with us, doesn't he? We can let him down, but he said, okay, let's try that one again. Because he wants us to build our faith. He wants to build relationship. He wants us to be in relationship together. He wanted Jonah to talk to him. He wanted to engage in his life. He wanted Hannah to pour out his life. And he was just waiting for Hannah to get to that point where she was pouring out her heart to him so he could answer her. And Jonah poured out his heart to God when he was in distress after he'd ran. And God then met him and gave him a second opportunity to go to Nineveh with the good news that if you repent, I may just save Nineveh. Now then, we haven't got time to explore what happened. So you're going to have to remind yourselves when you get home and read what's going to happen. But you see, what I want you to know is that the standout point in Jonah's life was this. Jonah was given a God mission and he chose to run and hide. If you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal saviour and friend, then you represent the King of Kings. We have a mission to have. Our mission is to anybody that's in our, in our lives, in our circles, to tell them about the saviour of the world. To speak to them about the one that we love. To speak to them, to pray for our friends and families. To realise that God is the only one that can make a difference in someone's life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour and friend, then I would urge you to come to the saviour. He died for you. He shed his precious blood. And he loves you so much this morning. And he's not going to take necessarily all your problems and, and, and stuff away. But he'll walk with you every step of the way until the journey's done. Action point, Jonah comes to his senses in a great big smelly fish and he prays. The takeaway point is this. If you're in a tough spot, talk it through with God first. A reality step. Do a health check. Rededicate your life to God if you need to. If you've ran away from God, if your relationship with God is lukewarm, then come back to Him this morning. Come back to Him this morning. He loves you. I'm never going to stop telling you that. He loves you. He cares for you. He died for you. He cares about your today and He cares about your tomorrow. And the things that are on your mind are on his mind too. So this morning we haven't got time to go any further. So I'm going to leave it with that slide there. But I just want to challenge each one of us this morning. What is God saying to you? Do you need to take a step of faith to God this morning? Do you know the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God? And God wants us to take a step if we haven't come to him, to the cross and repented of our sins and given our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he wants us to take a step towards the cross. But if you've been a Christian for many years, he wants you to keep taking steps of faith. Keep asking God. Keep talking to God. 
Be in a vibrant relationship together. God loves family. And I love the picture in Jonah where Jonah keeps questioning God. And later on, if you read those next two chapters, there's a conversation going on between God and Jonah has a bit of a salt, but they're talking. They're in relationship. And that's the key thing. Are you in a relationship that's vital and real with God this morning? Are you telling him what's on your heart, what's on your mind? And then are you walking, knowing the joy of the Lord is your strength? I pray that is for you this morning. And I pray that uh, if you'd like uh, me or someone to pray with you uh, this morning after the service, and please just grab us or grab someone here that you know so that you can do that. But allow God. Allow yourself to have a fresh vision of God. If your God has got too small, then I want you to just move those hands out and realise what an incredible God we have this morning.